Okay, this is Karina from KW Worldly, and today's guest is Richard Moore. Welcome. Hello. And I always do a little bio, uh, which is uh, introduction. So Richard Moore or originally worked 60 hours a week in the city of London before deciding to build his own business and help others to do the same. After building companies from the trenches up by taking ownership of sales teams, coaching leadership roles and consulting with multi-hundred million pounds organizations, Richard created his own company to help others get massive traction as they launch their businesses. Actually, originally, I was really interested in this concept of networking and uh, that was one of my drives because I was looking into um, issues that we're facing in this transition of the ways we work into the yeah. technology and remote and more free. Mm. And uh, one of the issues is collaboration and connectivity, which is connected to feeling lon lonely and loneliness. Yeah. Um, and then there are other issues as well. So I was really interested to, to speak about it. But before that, I also want to know your, your little bit of your story or your blueprint. Uh, you do bring a tremendous value uh, with Thank your business, you. with your social media. So I do definitely recommend to check out um, some of your Q&As and your videos uh, for entrepreneurs, but also for people uh, working online, um, checking sell sales, marketing, and yeah. a lot of cool tips, how to interact yeah. and how to execute that. Um, so to get back to the beginning about your transition, like what, uh, how did it come in your life? How did it go uh, that you changed from working in a, I assume it was a corporate world that you were yes, working Yes, that's in? right. Almost 10 years in London doing that. And then, wow. and then this, very different. So, so uh, yeah, um, there, there was one of those things where um, I was, it wasn't like a rags to riches story and I was fed up of being broke and all that kind of nonsense that marketers would say two years ago. <laughs> but actually it was, um, I was actually doing really well uh, in, in the city. Um, it's just, I had a number of personal things happen and around the time I was 30, I just um, needed to pivot out of it. So um, I had a, a really bad time where my um, members of my family died all within one year, just because they happened to in that time. And it made things really, it just kind of changed my perspective on things. And I was thinking, I'm not seeing my own, I had a daughter who'd just been born. And I was like, I'm not seeing my child because I'm working all the time. And the holy grail you see, I believe, isn't money or being a millionaire, it's flexibility. And the ability to, to say, you know, I'm going to spend time with my family today, for, for instance, is really important. And I think back then what I was doing was I was working so much that I was, I was sometimes calling home and saying, I just, I'm going to stay in a hotel tonight and things like that. And I was, I was not good in my body. I was like gray skin and like yellow eyes and just tired all the time. And, and I remember thinking they could triple the money and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this anymore. I need to stop. And I, I, it kind of all hit me. I, my mum then passed away and I had a bit of a, um, a, a mental time of it all. Uh, the next, the following year was very, very difficult. And so when I, I remember I, I, I just, I was like, I've got to do something different now. And so actually the first thing I did, I'd been doing a little bit of, of consulting in, on, on the side. So I knew I could do that. And because sales is my background, Karen, it means that I can always, um, I knew I could always make money. Um, but what I did was I started two Taekwondo academies um, because I've, I've been, I've been doing Taekwondo for, if I, I stopped them last year, but it would have been 20 years. Wow. So, um, so yeah, I've been doing it for, at the time I've been doing it for like, for like almost uh, over 10 years and teaching in London and things like that. So I started my own. I thought, let's just do this because I'm really good at this and I can teach them and I can be at home and I can just have a bit more time around family and so on. But um, it's within a couple of months, it was like, I'm really enjoying building the business more than doing Taekwondo. So actually I continued doing it, but then started on building uh, the consulting business that I have today. And um, it was just one of those things where I had so many things, tough stuff happening to me. And I just, it gave me a perspective of really is this how it's going to be for the next 30 40 years and and i'm really pleased i wasn't like 57 years old and thinking i wish i'd done things differently and it, to be honest i wish i'd done it sooner but i'm 
I'm very fond of the time I had in London because I learned so much about um, business and about the front line of business. And, and um, that experience is massive because I use it every day then and uh, now in, in the work I do. Great. Wow. Are you, you're still based in London, right? Yeah, so I, I have an office in London, uh, like a WeWork office, one where I can show up. Um, I'm actually, uh, I live now uh, to the east of the city. No one lives in London because it's far too expensive. But I live in the east, uh, east of it. And um, uh, I kind of, I dip in and out probably twice a week, sometimes three times a week and that's it. But otherwise I do work from home or I, um, you know, I spend time with my family or or I'm flying over to places like New York for 27 hours, which is another story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I asked you about that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so you are, yeah, I, I assumed you are anyway online, but you are remote, so partially home, yeah. partially in the, the shared offices? Or rent so, so, this, so this is my home office, um, and then, I, then I, and I work, I have a WeWork office as well. And I, something that you mentioned earlier about um, people being lonely and things like that, it's so important to be around people. You can, you've, you've worked in the world of e-commerce as well, so you know how it is, you can sit behind a keyboard and make a living doing it, but it becomes quite soul destroying after a while. And even doing this is great, but physically meeting people face to face is fantastic. And I think, well, it's, it's you know, people, humans need that, I believe. So, um, you know, that's why it's nice to do the events I do each month because I get to see not just people, but new people. And also it's good to consult with different companies each week because then I get to meet a load of new people as well. Um, and you know, I did uh, for a period in, I think it was like 2014, 2015, I was doing almost all of it online. And the only people I was interacting with other than my family were the, the, those students that I was teaching Taekwondo to. I remember feeling like this, I don't want this to go the way that it's all, all purely sitting at a desk. So I need to get out there more. And, um, uh, and so I made a point of doing more face to face, it's less efficient, but it's much more, uh, it's much more fulfilling, I feel. I agree completely. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, especially if you also build something, then very often you end up uh, being so focused. I did that as well, mistake in the beginning, so focused with laptop that um, you really get detached. And uh, <clears throat> that's why you have to, what I say when I'm trying to help people with that, First, understand yourself a little bit and what's going to work for you, but definitely find the ways to, to interact. I'm actually finishing up the workshop that is going to tackle the, the struggles uh, of really? That's yeah, good. The people working remotely. And uh, I, I am talking also about uh, diving a little bit deeper to understand your habits and patterns and kind of your, yeah. because sometimes it's also... Anyway, it's later on in the question I wanted to ask you as well. Something no, but it's an interesting it? point. And, and you know, I, I, um, on Tuesday, I was with a company. And I remember I was speaking to the sales manager about this. We're talking about remote working. And, and I said, you know, this is a job because they, they do phone-based uh, sales. And, and they have a, a CRM online. They, they, they have all of their leads on the. And it's like, this is totally a job you could do at home. But I said, but why would you want to? And we, we both agreed that. You, you know, you could do it at home and it would save the company a lot of money, but you don't get the banter and the fun and the interaction that kind of lubricates the day because technically the job could be done from home, but we're not robots. You need the human interaction to make it a fulfilling experience. Uh, unless of course the job is fulfilling in and of itself. Yes. But then it's also missing this part of kind of a freedom and flexibility to choose. So I think as we are moving towards the future, that's the, the, the thing, how to, how to, how are we going to evolve, how the future is going to bring, I think co-working spaces are playing a, a massive role in it. So probably some spaces where they're open and you interact and you connect and also You know, you're right. And I think like, if you look at a, like a WeWork or a co-working space, for example, uh, there's this, they're all the same in that when you go there you feel a really good buzz you're surrounded by people even if you're working on your own there's just a load of people there doing their thing and everyone's got their ambition and so on it's interesting my my, my younger sister uh, lives in San, near San Francisco and she works in the city there but she's got a young boy who's only two years old and she operates um, uh, a, an office uh, in San Francisco and in New York, and she shows up like two days a week at, or when is needed. And it's, it's a very San Francisco thing, as you know, but you know, it's, it's one of those, so it's like, let's just treat people like grown ups. If the work gets done 
and you get fulfilled, then probably you're doing it right. And if, if the way that looks is when it, you need a holiday, you take a holiday, rather than, oh, but I haven't got enough days, something ridiculous like that. And if you're going to be late because, you know, childcare, then that's okay. It's fine as long as stuff gets done. And I just think that there's too much, uh, too many strict rules that have the, this result of this kind of horrible regime that some people have to stick in. You know, I w I've worked with companies where they have to be at their desk at a certain time. And it's like, this is like a school. And even there, it's, it it's, you know, it's, it's that, that flexibility, it, not having that flexibility when you're grown ups, I think is a bit of a shame. It is, and schooling actually is like, uh, that, that old system education is preparing us to do that actually. But this is yeah. nice that you say it, because this is exactly the shift of mentality I also speak about, that uh, it's changing from, uh, you know, kind of being treated like children to taking responsibility in your hands but in order to, to really be successful, I mean, you also need to a little bit get to know yourself. You need to have much more trust to people, give them much more freedom, and they can use much more of their talents and, you know, get the stuff that they're, they're fulfilling. Uh, I totally learn agree. about development, uh, online yeah. courses, like really path, pave your path that is much more fulfilling and probably more meaningful for other people. And for me, this is the exciting part of how like the future of work is kind of changing and how we yeah. can, how the because, management. Because you, ex you can explore yourself and, and you develop as you go and it's, you can think expansively. And I think it's interesting that the, not the moment I, I pivoted into my own work, but when I started my own work, it was, I, I was stunned at how creative I was able to be and how lateral I was able to think because I wasn't given the space to do that before. Uh, that's how I was working. But it was like, you will sit on these tracks and work in this way. And as a result, your mind is so hemmed in, you don't think wider wide than that. And it's amazing how creative we can be when we give ourselves just a little bit of space to do it. Exactly. And actually, this is bringing uh, much more growth than anything else, than all these rules. And uh, companies are still afraid that uh, productivity drops when you let people be remote. And actually, it's opposite. It's increasing or it stays the same. Yeah, it's a control thing. And yeah. it's difficult because companies are commercial vehicles and, and they, they need to be like, yeah, but it's too much of an unknown quantity. That's the thing. But the, the, the irony is by letting people being fle be flexible, you, as long as you recruit them correctly, you, you do very well out of it, you know, because otherwise you get people who just, just take advantage. Indeed. There are challenges coming, but uh, that's why it's really great moment also to look at it at the moment, at the yeah. time. And I actually saw also, if we're talking about that, uh, you saying a, uh, about some company checking box with net newsletters and just sending certain amount of newsletters that they have to send and if they miss, and then I was thinking, this was the question I was always asking in the, like meeting corporate companies that are European or worldwide from different various uh, um, positions I had when I moved abroad and I was like mm. trying to struggling, finding my way. Uh, mm. And I was like, seriously, like you don't think about the result and outcome yeah. and the goal, but you really need to just take, take the box. It's like. Ah. It's, it's because we've been conditioned against that and that's the problem with schools is that schools uh, are a system or it is built in a way to cre create people who follow rules and, and who do certain things in a rigid way because that's the world we used to live in it used to be so now go work in a factory and get used to being on time and keeping your work tidy and working to a routine but, but that's not the world we're in as much now and it won't be in the next uh, few years as well I think it's interesting because it, it does take time and I know it well because I did corporate for a long time and then you know, I'm getting on for around the same amount of time that I've not. And it took me a while to adapt because I, I remember to start with, I felt like I should be in this office at nine in the morning. Exactly. I was like, I feel I should. Um, that's my it's question. Just, what was the most challenging uh, with this mentality change that you took the mentality from corporate and when you moved to suddenly being on your own and building something, what was the most of the struggle that you had to realize that, okay, this mentality is not going to work in this uh, environment? I, I realized that I was in charge and it didn't matter. And I started, because I read a lot and I read, I was just reading and reading and I was like, do you know what? It's the outcome that matters. What am I really trying to achieve here? Just and, and that came from being able to 
rather than having my head down, going to the commute, go to work, go to commute home, go to bed and do the whole thing again, I had the freedom to be able to think of it more. And I was like, what matters to start with is that I can pay the bills. If I can pay the bills, then, then we go from there. And there are some days where I don't do that much. And I don't do that much because I've done what I need to do. So the, the problem, and this is, this is kind of a, a, a perverse thing, is that a, 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 at the moment it, it is fashionable to say you work really hard. It's called, you know, it's, say like, oh, look at me, I'm hustling all the time. But the, <laughs> problem, the problem with that is that it, it's perverse because it's a good thing that people finally are actually working rather than like being bored and not bother doing anything. So it's good that people are getting behind themselves. But to work for the sake of it is stupidity. Um, unless it's something you genuinely love to do to the point where you'd do it. If you, like, like right now, if, I, if I'd won the lottery and I was a multi-millionaire, I would still be here doing this because I really enjoy doing it, you see. So that doesn't matter so much. But I, I do think it, it stemmed from me getting intentional about things and saying, you know, if, I, if I've achieved what I need, if I've closed the business I need to close and I've done, you know, X, Y, and Z that needs to be done, well, so go have a cup of tea. <laughs> or go spend time with your children you know what i mean so it's fine but but it's a combination not just of the corporate world but also the conditioning that our parents have given before us and that's not their fault they are a product of a different yeah. time these are so-called patterns that i've been discovering and i also want to help people work with because it's uh, this conditioning you call it it's exactly the patterns and if you have that pattern and you it's like also your belief one is the belief that the hard work is the one that you get money and it's the only way and the second one is the pattern of that you are in that rhythm and you have to yeah it's, good. And it's, it's a really habit hard to, to break out of. exactly it's really hard to overcome unless you know some kind of tools and you you really understand yourself and where it's coming from but it, yeah. takes, it really takes a while to the thing get is hard work hard work is an important tool if you have ambitions to achieve something that requires hard work, but hard work used to this, I'm talking decades ago, hard work used to be all you had in order to get a job and keep a job so that you did, because the job was what gave you the security because there were, it's not that there wasn't entrepreneurship or that people wouldn't start their own business, but the risk level was huge. But now, like I had someone speak at my event uh, in, um, I think it was n uh, December. She's 21. She's making six figures a year off her Instagram account. Um, and the tools we've got now are outrageous compared with what we used to have. So she doesn't have to, she obviously works hard because it's something she loves doing, but she doesn't have to stick to a certain routine or set of habits because if she doesn't, she doesn't get a paycheck. Um, she goes and creates herself. And so it's just a very different world. And the reality is that it's hard for some people to accept it because I may have been conditioned for like 20 years that this was how I had to be. But then my parents before me had been conditioned for 40 years that that's how it had to be and, and so on. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a very different world and that's just how it is. So it, it's a fascinating time. We're in, we will look back in 20 years from now and say this was that kind of pivotal transition road for so many and that's why I, I you know it's important to kind of jump in and get on with it uh, the, the change and that's why so many companies are falling under not because they're not good, good products and so on but because their way of working isn't as relevant anymore beautiful oh my god i couldn't agree more and this is why i am really excited to to kind of speak about it i do care about this meaningful changes from the individuals but also globally that you are mm -hmm. really tapping into yesterday actually humans 2.0 uh, i yeah. was replying to some one of the um <clears throat> talks uh, on linkedin about uh, using purpose in your life you know and that's also what i'm looking at and i think one of my questions later but i can ask now like what is what are, what is driving you when you are like uh, to keep your energy, to keep your motivation, to keep your sparkle? What what is what are the things that are driving you? That you yeah, it's a it's a couple of there's a couple of things. Um, some are obvious. So I have children, and it's irresponsible because they can't fend for themselves, and I want them to have. You know, I'd never had loads of money when I was a child, and I had a single mum, and there was two sisters as well, so there's three children to raise, and. She couldn't drive, there was no money and all that kind of thing. So I want them to have all the experiences they could have. I want them to go to Disneyland. I want them to be 
to have lots of toys if they want toys or they want I want them to be able to go out and experience stuff do you see what I mean and I want them to have both their parents as well and so um there's a lot of motivation to get that kind of thing right but also um my mother passed away a few months before she was due to retire it was very profound for me because she worked tremendously hard and she was very much like, I'm going to be retiring soon. That, then I can get my break in that. And then it never happened. And so um, I, I also, I think that, you know, without question, she's my hero. She raised me and everything. And she gave me a lot of my kind of ambition. But I, I think I, I think it would be quite disrespectful to not jump out of bed and go and attack the day um, because she no longer has the opportunity to do that. And she also gave me everything I've kind of got to get me where I am. And so uh, I owe it to her. I also owe it to my family. I also owe it to, to me. I owe it to my past self that went through a lot of very, very horrible stuff, really bad stuff for a long time to make the most of now because it valid it means it was all oh it's it's all right in the end it was all it was kind of all worth it if you like i also owe this is important i think as a mindset thing it all i also owe it to my future self that's not the 60 year old richard I mean, sure legacy and so on but that's the richard in six months time i owe it to myself to work really hard whilst i've got my energy because right now like i mean I'm in a really sweet spot where I've got a good amount of experience in what I've done. Um, and so, but I'm not like, tw I'm not like 20, but I'm also not like 80. I'm in a really sweet spot. I'm, I'm just shy of 40 and I've got um, all the energy uh, that I, that I ever would have. I'm fit and healthy. And so I need to make the most of it because you don't know what's around the corner. In the last two years, I've had three operations and I never was in hospital before. And, and I've had lots of stuff, um, you know, I've got like loads of scars all over my stomach. And that kind of paused me for a bit and made me realize that, you know, things can happen to you. And um, uh, so when I got, and I was, you know, I was in the hospital going, when I'm, when I'm back and fit and healthy, I have to make the most of it again. And I, it, it sounds bad, but you never know what's going to happen. And so... I want to make sure that I leave, um, I don't leave bad stuff for my, for my family to have to deal with. I want it to be like, you know, they, they flourish as a result. But then on top of all of this, um, I feel that if you can look after yourself and you're doing all right, well, then you should try and use your ability. Uh, for instance, I, I think I've got good engagement and, and attention and things like that. And you should leverage that to do good. So for instance, my live events, I could just pocket all the money or I could give a load of it to charities. And now we've Thank raised you. thousands of dollars for yeah. charities around the world. And every single event raises money for another. So I was speaking to the three running the Melbourne event this morning um, and the one at the end of May, and that's going to donate money to people in Melbourne. Like, why wouldn't you? So there's so many, it's a multifaceted thing now. When I was 21, it was just like, I just want a pile of cash. But that's cool. That's fine. That's what I was like then. Um, but now I just, I, I want to make sure I get out of bed and do something like meaningful with each day. I know that sounds really cliche, but, but uh, you know, why wouldn't you when you can? I'm kind of lucky. You think about, think about my situation. I, I can live and work in London. You know, I'm born with, with all my senses. I, I, I pretty much won the lottery. So it makes sense to make the most of it. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. I really like this. Um, I was. I wanted to ask about that. Uh, the idea with the bringing the the li life, business life, um, mm, entrepreneurs, and uh, bringing it to charity. Like, what was the inspiration for that? Well, I, actually, I wanted to build something that operated on three levels. The one level was the people who had actually showed up. I wanted them to get practical value. So that's why there are speakers rather than just networking. And I wanted the whole thing to be built around the community. So rather than being awkward and saying, hi, I'm Richard, how, what do you do? It was hugging because people know each other from say LinkedIn or whatever. And that's what's happening now. It's really good. But the second level is that I wanted people around the world to learn from the value in that session as well. That's why I have the live stream uh, of the events in the entrepreneur business group on Facebook. So, I remember the last one in London, it's like there's people watching from Hong Kong and LA at the same time, it's really nice. But then the third level is helping people who don't even know that the events exist. 
and you know um i think the new york one in in january was really hit it home for me um pencils of promise was the uh, was the charity uh, who we've worked we're working with this whole year now so that they're working with us again in, in may and um uh, CJ, the guy who came over to talk about talk about the charity, said the amount you've donated is enough to pay for a water filter for a school of a hundred children for a year. And everyone was like, "Wow, that's because it's, it's only a small amount of money." But you just think because we've done this, there are people out there who can drink clean water in Ghana. And he showed. I went to his office and he showed me like this virtual reality mock up of of the school. And we, I was like, "We're doing stuff for these people." And, and what are, it, the it's not entirely selfless because it feels really good when you do it. <laughs> yes, but it also kind of feel like um, obligations as we are so close to it right now because we can travel it, we can see it online, we can see it on social media. You know, we see, we start to be, be yeah, I mean, more that's united. It. I mean, I mean but that's, that's it. It was, only, it was only 18 months, two years ago. I remember, remember saying, I think I said to, I said to quite a few people, I think I said, I said to my wife, I was, I was like, it's disgusting that we make all this money and don't give some of it away. And, I'm, and I remember seeing, I think, I think it was something in the news. It might be like some children being killed in a blast somewhere like Syria. I think it was. And I remember, I remember I was like, what I, we've got, I feel genuinely like I want to do something about that. And um, not just saying it. Cause that's a nice thing to say. Like, I, I, and so ultimately an, an end goal for me would be to have my own charity because then I can really dictate where the money goes. But um, for now, at least, it, at least we're giving something back to help people because some people are screwed when they're born, you know? <laughs> and so that's really hard for them as a, to kind of, to kind of make something of their world. So if we can do anything, I know it's not much, but if you can do something, you might as well. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, what have you learned about yourself in that process when you started your business or you created it or perhaps when before you created it that like um, that helped you to grow and overcome obstacles? What was one of those things that I, you um, discovered? I, I, without question, I've learned to grow up. Um, I've learned to be a, a responsible person. And if you can imagine, I, I look at my business in the same way as I look at one of my children. And people might think that's bad, but it, like, I see it on the same level. My children get my thoughts throughout the day. I, I have a filter of, will this affect them? Is this something that's good for them? And it's the same for business as well. And, and, and so I treat it like something where if I don't care for it, it will fall away. And all the good things that it brings, um, none of them will happen unless I, 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 I help it thrive. And that can only happen if you um, kind of trust yourself. So it's been great to collaborate with people. It's been wonderful to build a network and a community and these connections have all helped me. Uh, but um, without question, you, I, I've learned to rely on myself. It sounds a bit cynical, but if, you, if, you, if your start point is, I do everything to make sure it's done right. And if it's not been done right, I make it right. And if I, if I, you know, if I'm going to have a successful day, it's because I intentionally make it successful. And if I need to make money, there's no excuses. I do it. And if I, you know, have to work harder, then I find another gear, all of that. Maybe it's a parent thing as well, but there's, there was never a case of me saying, Oh, I wonder if this, I wonder if this will work out. I hope it doesn't fail. It was, no, it is going to work out. I just have to steer it in the right direction. So it's been very, very, at times very aggressive with myself because I can't drop the ball. There's too many people relying on me. Um, but I, I kind of like that kind of pressure. I do very well with that. <laughs> Some people don't, they like worry about how it's all going to go. I'm like, let me out. I, I like it when it's hard. Um, but I think that, um, that's that's what matters is is that i I've, I've definitely learned to rely on myself and not make up because it's very easy when you've got safety nets when you know you're going to get paid at the end of the month you can make up excuses for not doing stuff um if, with that as an example like if i did if i didn't make money there's no money there's mortgages there are two cars there's mouths to feed no one pays for the nappies uh, of thin air so you have to go make the money so i just think being responsible overarches all of this you know and there's been lots of other stuff as well I've, I've learned a lot of skills as I've gone but uh, I've learned that I'm really good at the thing I do which has been nice as well it validates it 
cool. And it also brings me to the to the idea of actually the, the most what I discovered that the most of the empowerment of changing your life and your work and whatever you want to build uh, into the future yeah. or change is this realization that you are like it's up to you it's really up to you you can even re re rewire your brain you can even bring yeah. new patterns you can really this this is empowerment so the responsibility actually to realize that it's not external world it's actually you that decides and has the power to actually any, do anything you you want to do yeah it kind it's of right. is a limit actually of course you have the responsibilities and family etc but ultimately what stops you nowadays i mean you want right. to pass That's here it. you can take steps you want to go here you can connect yeah. you want to go here you can learn you can study you can do online you can read you can read tons of books that's also mm -hmm. part of the for me transformation of mentality of how we live and work yeah this i think it's all about perspectives and um it's interesting when you take stock of every year, say on New Year's, some people do that, or, or I, I look at my year every birthday. I'm like, what? Well, it's interesting when you always look back and you're like, I could, I could have gone bigger. It's amazing I could have gone bigger or I could have done it better, you know. And <clears throat> usually the reason why isn't just knowledge, it's just ambition or, or a belief that maybe you couldn't have done as much as you could. And um, I find it's always nice when people will say things like, don't you think you're maybe going a bit too going a bit too big. I, I, it was one month of entrepreneur business life and I said, right, we're going to do a New York one. And so many people said, I think you should maybe just see how it goes first in London. I said, that's good. That means that, you know, I'm jumping ahead and I want to uh, go and experience the exhilaration of trying to do something huge rather than organically slowly build this little thing. And, and it just worked for me that, but that perspective is it's it, what happens over time with the habit you get into this habit of being able to look back on yourself from your future self like imagining you're 50 or 60 or 70 years old and going what would i be saying to myself right now i'd be like just jump just go and like that's why the decision to go to new york is like come on let's go and do it you know and, and let's go and um build an event out there and and see where it takes us so um just kind of give yourself permission to uh to, to take those le leaps because it's i say it's really exhilarating yeah, the growth uh, is actually getting out of your comfort zone and uh, challenging yourself constantly. Yeah. It, it is scary, but then when you realize it's kind of up to you and you can make some hoops and maybe some, you know. Yeah, and would you, wouldn't you agree, wouldn't you agree that um, it takes time to get comfortable with trusting your ability uh, to do things? Um, yes. Because to start with, you're unsure. It's like your body when you're a two-year-old, you're, you're unsure of what your body's capable of doing. But after a while, you, you get a lot of confidence because you're like, I just, I know what my limits are. I know what I'm capable of. I know I'm good at that thing. I know I can walk into a room and talk about certain things and I don't need to prepare as much now because I know I've got it. You know what I mean? So it, it takes a bit of time, doesn't it, to build the confidence in, in, in uh, that kind of self-conviction. Yep, I, I agree, I agree. Um, for the networking and connecting, uh, I was wondering, um, because it's really, I think it's really great. You put a lot of emphasis on, on creating community anyway, in your business and startup and, and your work. Um, and then I think it's really brilliant idea that you already connect beforehand to go to networking event or before you, you go to some event to meet. Of course, I'm, I'm, I have never been, but hopefully maybe I joined London. I, I hope so. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I'm sure it's kind of, it's creating completely different vibe and people feel much more comfortable and uh, the, the, the whole event will go differently. Yep. But what would you say to people that struggle with that connectivity? Like they, they maybe, I don't know, they start a business or they start even working remotely and they st feel disconnected, but it's not a natural thing to them. Like I was calling, I was using the introvert example because I do, I have been working with my friend, which is much more introvert than he was in the world. And I yeah. see the difference, how he, it's for him not natural as to me to just speak to people, to be very open, to connect. Uh, and I see you seem like a natural speaker. And, uh, and uh, so I was also wondering for in the beginning for you, was it very challenging? But uh, in general, what would you say? Like what, what to, how to tackle it? How to really do the yeah. step? It's difficult. I, and, and actually my... Um, I, I used to be a very introverted, very, very shy person, very shy. I was not social in the slightest. At school, I didn't have loads of friends. I was the computer nerd 
I, you know, I remember I've said so this story to so many people. Like when I was 13, there was this moment I remember where all my friends, well, all my friends, a lot of people were out playing football at lunchtime at school. And I was t uh, like programming my first operating system. I was a proper geek then. And I didn't really, I was just a very shy person. And um, my first job was a sales job. And I, uh, because of being told by my mother, you know, you don't, you never quit a job, you make it work. And I was like, okay, I have to get used to it. But it's interesting, like if you fast forward a bit to last year, um, I put out 10 tips, 10 days on, on um, LinkedIn about how to communicate and network if you're introverted or shy. And some of the tips are, are you know, it's still out there, but a lot of it is um, about setting yourself different objectives to what you think you should have as objectives. So for instance, a shy person or an introverted person wouldn't be open to just go, let's, quick, let's look at a networking event, for instance. They wouldn't necessarily want to go up to someone and just say, hi, how's it going? Because that's, that's too scary for them. A confident person would be fine with it. So what, the reason why they're fearing it is because their objective or what they think their outcome is that they should be doing, it, it, going for, is to have a conversation with someone they don't know, but there's all the fear and rejection, things like that. And obviously one of the main hacks is you never think. Don't give yourself any time to think because that is where that will drive fear and you just act. But the best thing to do is to change your, um, your objectives uh, to something lower down. And this isn't lowering aspirations. This is working in your comfort zone. And actually for some people, they need to work in their comfort zone as a way to build confidence, learn to trust themselves, and then they can go more expansively. So, um, a great example was a few weeks back, I went to a trade show with a company who is a client of mine, and they asked me to take this new starter who had never been to a trade show before to show him the ropes. And he was really nervous. He was a little bit shy, but he was really nervous because he was like, his perspective was, I need to try and close deals with people. And these are senior directors from companies. I'm normally on the phone, and now I'm... I'm like face to face with it's real life and it's too scary. And I said, so let's change your, your objectives. So that the, right, his hack was your objective today is just to participate. You literally have to go in the next hour. We're going to go to five stands at this big trade show. That's it. You're not even going to speak to anyone. Just five stands. That's all. And so we did it. And what happened was on like three of them, um, people came over. Hi, can I help? And then he just started talking. I said, now, you've already won because all five stands you went to, that was it. Uh, but you got a bonus of someone spoke to you. And it's the same as when I coach people in selling on, uh, on the phone, for instance. They're so nervous about dialing that number and trying to pitch a CEO of a company. So I said, so your objective isn't to try and pitch someone and try and get a sale. Your objective is to dial 10 numbers. That's it. And if someone picks up, good for you. Do that for two days. And then, and then when you get more comfortable with it, then you say, right, my objective now is to ask the receptionist, can I speak to the CEO? So that doesn't make sense to a super confident person. They're like, oh, just get on with it. But that, that, that's not a solution for an introvert. An introvert has to warm up. And so online, building a community, an introvert's job, if they do nothing ever, their job should be, if they consume content and they spectate, their first thing is just to like something like 10 posts that you actually watch today. If they do that, now write one meaningful comment. That's it, just one today. And you see what I mean? Like, and then you build up to it. And eventually, that person's shooting video. <laughs> but it takes time to get there. Do, do you see what I'm saying? That's the problem, we, yeah. we go in too high if we're nervous. We need to sit in our comfort zone for certain things. Yes, and I think also, <clears throat> for sure, like getting into different communities, uh and like later meeting in networking it's going to be also probably changing that perspective but then you also I, I have think, to i think people should network i should go physically to a networking event at least once a month because i think it's good for the soul it's good to meet people and everyone's just as nervous and you ne i I'm, i always get something out of them i always find a new person to work with or something like that it's really interesting um, you learn stuff. It's just a good idea. Worst case, you'd probably get free free beer and pizza, <laughs> which is a good thing, right? Yeah, sure, sure thing. Um, and what about unplugging? 
like uh, taking the, partially taking that mentality from the previous type of nine to five and like being paid for time rather than perhaps results or what you're yeah. you're doing. Uh, how do, maybe in the beginning you struggled struggled with it or not? But uh, what would what would you say like how to to unplug? What what is your tip? Because there's a lot of tips like okay you have to divide you have to da da da. But is there something I, I, that? I think that's bad when people say you have to divide your time uh, in, in the sense that you have to have work and you have to have life. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong because that's not the world we're in now. The world we're in now is one where you have your life and woven into your life can be, if you choose to, as I have, and it feels like you have as well, if you choose to, you can have your work in your life, which is, work is a bad word for it. I work really hard, but... If it was a Friday night and my family wasn't here, I wouldn't be watching YouTube. I'd be doing stuff like this. And as I've said before to someone, this is my Netflix, what I do. <laughs> Building events looks like work to one person, but to me, it's really good fun. And so I, I do that throughout my day. And as I said to you at the start of this, like flexibility is the holy grail for me. So if I need to, like in a few hours time, <clears throat> I'll go to the school and pick up my daughter because that's me I can do. And I think that um, that is a way in which I unplug. But, but more, more directly answering your question, I, I make sure that weekends, the content's scheduled, but I'm offline. When I'm with family, I, we always have our meals together and I, I make sure I, you know, the phone's down and things. I don't need my phone. Nothing's ever that urgent. So I don't need my phone in front of my family. And so it's a lot of playtime. But I also... Um, really try and unplug like for a little bit longer each year. So um, I'll go away and do that. And so this year, for instance, I'm going to San Francisco again. Uh, my sister lives out there. Um, I'm running an event, um, but I also, I'll also take a week and we'll go up probably going to the hills because uh, there's a, a vineyard up there, um, totally off grid and just, you know, hang out together. And it's good. It gives your brain a lot of time. But, you know, I read. Or I'll, I'll, this morning I went to the gym and then went for a run and stuff like that. Just kind of take yourself out of it because it's also practical because the more time out you give yourself, the more your brain can think about stuff and you come up with some great ideas. That's true. That's exactly true. And I think it's a newbie uh, um, mistake, which I also did, which would be tag tagging and taking the laptop everywhere I was, you know, uh, even yeah. on weekends. And at the moment I didn't know there is still more this and this and this and that and that and that. And then yeah. ultimately you don't have a space to actually think creatively and uh, have this moment of yeah. rest. And then the ideas can emerge. But, but, but you'll never get all the work done. And, and one thing I've suggested to people is that everything should be intentional even it sounds really robotic but even hanging out with my children is intentional in the sense it's like oh, sure i can be flexible but i would say at this time go and have have some time with them and it's it's because you won't do it otherwise so you should schedule just like a business meeting and just how important that business meeting is you should also schedule a nap or read for 10 minutes or go for a walk or go to the gym it is scheduled so for me, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 a.m. till 7 a.m. is the gym. That's non-negotiable. In the same way as at this time on this day, I'm doing a business meeting, you know. So it, the fun stuff is just as important as the business stuff. But the problem is we schedule the business stuff so it gets done. We don't do that with other stuff. You should do it with lunch. <clears throat> That's why people work and don't eat their lunch because they don't schedule it and give it the same kind of meaning as a business meeting. It's all just one thing which is your life so you need to look after yourself you know? yeah cool i i've been using um, this um i was reading about it from the, this guys i think from silicon valley that um, wrote the book make time or yeah make time and they're talking about the highlights and i've been using this highlight into the workshop like to look mm -hmm. at the highlights of the day which are also including your the important stuff in your life not only yeah. work and then yeah. uh, like make sure that those highlights are take like are fulfilled and then the yeah. small stuff piling together and badging together yeah um i think you were also saying for your to speak about structure because that's also really important um that you do um in the beginning social media and in the end of the day and then you you leave the space for the yeah most, the stuff uh, challenging the time you're awake and, and, and that's it so so I, I view it as like i have my best hours 
my best hours of the day when I'm most alert gets the stuff that needs me the most. And then, you know, the, the stuff that doesn't need me as much, my brain when it's tired can do invoicing and can do um, social media because that doesn't, that's not particularly difficult, you know? And so I, I think about when I put things in as well. And last year it was actually picked up by uh, a guy who writes Forbes. Um, <clears throat> there was an article about it, the, the when the to-do list instead of the to-do list. And the idea is that I schedule all the stuff I'm going to do in the day and then put a time next to each of them. So then it's almost like I gamify the day. So it's like now I've got till this time to do this thing, this time to do this. So sticking to a schedule can be a really good thing as well. And again, you get stuff done. That's the main thing. Cool, cool. And what, what, what is the one thing, um, perhaps maybe let's, let's divide it, like one advice to... Um, to maybe fresh entrepreneurs or people that want to go that path or people that would like to create something of their own to, let's say, be more flexible and remote, what would be number one tip you, you would say or advice? Okay. Um, For example, also creating business. What would you say? Like, well, what's your core of your business, if you can reflect on it? Yeah, so I think, I think you need to have, um, you need to be doing something that has meaning to you. Um, because you've got, you, there will be times where you have to be willing to say, okay, so no sleep tonight then, or, or stuff has to get done. And sometimes you do have to really push it out for it. And you've got to be, you've got to be cool with doing like the boring stuff. And some like yesterday morning, I to, it wasn't boring at all, but, but yesterday morning I had to sit, I, I sat for an hour. I went through over 70 comments on a, on a post on LinkedIn that I got overnight. I'm like, man you've got to want to do it because otherwise like you know what are you doing so if you find any element of what you're doing um not particularly interesting you need to sell yourself on it so you better be that's why i always find it puzzling that people would want to sell someone else's product or something like that when it's your own baby you really get behind it you know and i just think that um you got to be cool with the fact that at times it'll be difficult and at times um, a lot will be asked of you, you'll be pulled in many different directions. So if you're on board with your kind of your, your, the thing you're building and the outcomes it's going to give you, then you'll be able to navigate that. But if you're not, it's probably, it's probably not going to work out because you, you'll lose heart when you really need it. And what is your, the last, the last question, <clears throat> what is your core, really core of your business? Because I think one of the, the points I know one of the books you were recommending was speaking about a business uh, that went back to the core and even cut out uh, so many coffee spaces. I don't want to mention the name of the business because I'm not really a fan. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> um, but um, and uh, it was basically about the fact to that sometimes we could go big and forget about the core. And this is also for me very. I mean, this core of what why you do it. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's the yeah. navigator of a navigation of your, you know, of your whole business and it yeah. should be this uh, North star. So what is it for you? Besides the fact that of course you want to, that you like the flexibility you want to provide and for your family, you want to have certain lifestyle, uh, you have background in sales, but what, what was the core that actually, you know, drives you it's and you do yeah, it? It's a, it's a good question. And because there's so many little things that, that come together. I think I, I really, really like meaningful relationships with people and, and a word for that is a community. And I think that if I'm doing things that build a community, that gives me um, a wonderful, for want of a better word right now, a wonderful leverage to be able to do great things with that. And, and um, one of the things can come out of it. And I think that um, there's so many experiences out there um, that, it would be a shame to not go and join in with that. Um, that if community is the ticket to get you there, it makes sense to, to kind of make that part of your world. So the, that maybe is it, but one thing's for sure is, is that, is that I, I know that I'm in many ways, I'm good at teaching things. And if you look at what I've always done, my first management job within like 18 months was a sales manager and I was teaching people how to sell. And I, then I was teaching Taekwondo and then I consulted, which is a form of teaching and mentoring people through building their businesses. And now entrepreneur business live is about 
teaching people and helping give value back, I suppose, maybe is that that's the core. And, you know, a, a very long term aim is is a charity, but that charity would probably have some form of education attached to it. And I would love to hack when their time is right. Not right now, because my events are big for me, uh, but, but hack at the way education looks. And I think that maybe that's because I'm a parent, but yeah, giving in, giving value to people and, you know, nothing beats. I had, a, I had a message from someone this morning. She's based over in Sydney. She'd just done my basics of LinkedIn course. And she sent me a message on Instagram saying, I've just been doing some of, some of the tips are just so good. They really worked for me. And I've just had these results. And I was like, that's fantastic. You know, so it's kind of selfish because it's nice to get that kind of validation. But a lot of it is, is uh, the, the, I suppose the core is about a community where you're doing something impactful for them. So giving value in that. And that's why the Q and A's have been really good fun. I've done, you know, 143 weeks worth of them now. And it's been over, like, I worked out the other day, it was like 1200 questions, but there's <laughs> so much fun in, in helping people. Cause that moment, you know, when someone's like, Oh, what a good idea. Or I've never looked at it that way. It's just, um, maybe that giving value, uh, in, in a kind of, in a teaching scenario is, is kind of what, what really, drives it because i really get a thrill from helping someone especially when it's from my space because i there's stuff i know really well and that's that's why that's why i do it and i don't know necessarily how to um i don't know the ins and outs of law i don't know how to cut someone's hair but i do know my thing really well i think that makes sense you know so hopefully that answers your question in a roundabout way yes it, it does it does and uh, it's beautiful that actually for me that's the pure you know that's the best sales you can do actually just share what is exciting you or what you know or you experience yeah. and this is the best branding as well just to be mm. yourself and share it and that's the best way also to fish for your clients you also talk a lot about closing deals but and it was nice that you mentioned it's also like in the coaching i, I <clears throat> from the life coaching perspective that it's no point of really closing the deals if you don't have that flow or if you mm -hmm. you know you I totally agree. There's a lot of irony in that I, I coach people on closing stuff, but my work tends to be inbound, but that's because I have a lot of patience. So I, I, I can hold my breath forever and eventually then people will start buying stuff on their own. But so, uh, but, but yeah, both work. I think, I think it's a very in, in, interesting world. I'm very glad I did a sales job to start with. It certainly set me on a track. I'm happy with, that I'm on now. Yeah, beautiful. And I think it's, Beautiful ending. Thank you so much for Thank talking. You. And I really hope to meet uh, at one of your events uh, running, Definitely. perhaps London. Amsterdam or, or Amsterdam. London, we'll make sure. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got one yet, so we should probably run one. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And it's nice to do an interview where it's not just, give me three tips for selling. <laughs> it's, it's something a bit more uh, soulful. So thank you. I really enjoyed it. And um, what's your process for posting this? Is it, is it like in the next day or week or, or like in a month from now? How do you do it? Uh, well, it will show up probably in a few days. <clears throat> so I will give you all the, the info. Yeah. yeah. Let me know Thanks. and then I can, I can share it for you. No problem at all if that helps. Thank you so much and see you. See you around. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you later. Take care of yourself.